Okay, let's look at some ways to use the half angle formulas. For example, if I want to find the exact value of the cosine of the angle 5 pi over 8, uh, what I would do is I'd look at 5 pi over 8, which is not an angle that fits nicely in one of our 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90 triangles. But if I were to double this angle, If you multiply this angle by 2, then you end up with a nice angle, 5 pi over 4, right? That's a pi over 4 angle, so uh, you'll get a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we can do some work with that. So for that reason, I'm thinking I'm going to use the half angle formula for cosine. So recall that the cosine of x is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of double this angle x, so cosine of 2x, all of that divided by 2. All right? Okay, so let's get to work with cosine of 5 pi over 8. Cosine of 5 pi over 8 is going to equal plus or minus. Well, let's figure that out first. 5 pi over 8, we have to look for that, okay? So I'll come over to the side, I'll angle, angle, label this angle 5 pi over 8. So pi is the top half here. If I cut that into eight equal pieces, that gives me four pieces per quadrant. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So five pi over eight. Here's one pi over eight. Two, three, four. Here is five pi over eight. So our reference triangle is going to be in the second quadrant for this angle. Okay? So cosine is negative the horizontal side here is negative. So cosine of 5 pi over 8 is going to be the negative square root of 1 plus the cosine of 2 times the angle on the left side. The angle on the left side is 5 pi over 8. 2 times that is 5 pi over 4. All of this over 2. And so now we could figure out the value of the right side because we know the cosine of 5 pi over 4. In fact, let's figure it out. So I'll draw another picture here. I've got two different angles I'm working with, 5 pi over 8 and twice as big, 5 pi over 4. Well, we know pi over 4 is half of a quadrant. So here's 1 pi over 4, 2, 3, 4. Here's 5 pi over 4. We get this 45, 45, 90 triangle here. The cosine of that would be the horizontal side, which is negative square root of 2 over 2, which is what I'm going to put in for this cosine value here. So I have the negative square root of 1, plus negative square root of 2 over 2. Notice there's no cosine anymore. All over 2. Now I just have to simplify this. So I'll come underneath the square root. So let me extend my square root. I'll multiply the top of this fraction by 2 and the bottom of this fraction by 2. On top, the 2 is going to distribute over this plus. So I end up with negative square root. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 cancels with this 2, so I get minus the square root of 2. And on the bottom, 2 times this 2 is just 4. Finally, I can split the square root. So I'd have negative, I'd have my square root on top, like this. And on the bottom, the square root of 4 is simply 2. So we end up with this being the exact value of cosine of 5 pi over 8. And yet we don't have a special triangle for 5 pi over 8, we used our knowledge of an angle twice as big, 5 pi over 4, to determine this. Here's another slightly different example. I want to know the value of sine of x over 2, and I don't know what x is. If the cosecant of the angle x is negative 3 halves, and x is between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw a picture of what I know about each angle. So I've got angle x, and I've got angle x over 2. It's very important to distinguish here. So angle x is between 270 and 360, so that's in the fourth quadrant. So our reference triangle for x is going to be here. I also know the cosecant of x is negative 3 halves. That means the sine of x is the reciprocal of that, because they're reciprocals. So that means opposite over hypotenuse is 2 thirds. So opposite's 2, hypotenuse is 3, and the 2 is negative because it's down. If I find this other side using the Pythagorean theorem, because this is a right triangle, 
I have the square root of 9 minus 4. So this is simply the square root of 5. So that's angle x. That's everything I need to know. x over 2, well, x is between 270 and 360. So if I divide all three sides of this by 2, x over 2 would be between 135 and 180. So if I draw a picture of that, here's 135, here's 180, so angle x over 2 is here. Okay, So that's everything we know. Now let's figure out what I need to find. I need to know the sine of x over 2. So that's this angle here. So the sine of x over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of what I get when I double this angle. If I multiply this angle by 2, I just get x, and now that's all over 2. So we can see, in order to determine this value, I have to figure out the cosine of x, and I can do that over here. So we'll do that in a minute. But the first thing is, sine of x over 2, is it positive or negative? Well, here's x over 2. It's in between uh, 135 and 180. The sine is up. This vertical side is up, so it's the positive square root. So I have the positive square root of 1 minus the cosine of x. So let's come over here and find the cosine of this angle x, right? I've got it labeled there. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's square root of 5 over 3. So that's what I'm going to plug in for my cosine of x. And the square root extends over all of this. If I multiply the top of this fraction by 3 and the bottom by 3, I get the square root of 3 minus the square root of 5 all over 6. And there's the exact value of the sine of x over 2.